Well, hi everyone. This is Arthur and Fiona Christen, and we have our friend Justin White, and behind the camera is Bruno. And we're part of the small group of Love for Life. Uh, we're making this video for the purpose to bring to everyone's attention that we need to get these kingdoms off the ground. Um, we are looking at um, one, there's one opportunity for a piece of land that's coming up in a few weeks at an auction which will provide the details at the end of this video and you can have a look at that. Um, in the meantime, uh, we wanted to give you some ideas as to why Kingdom and why uh, people like us have spent so many years out, trying to be outside the system and trying to uh, learn what is going wrong with the world we're living in and why is there so much harm and how can we provide a remedy to stop the harm that we've all been experiencing. So, that's what we're here for. So, for me, uh, the reason why I want to have a kingdom, which means do no harm community, uh, is that I want to be part of a large family. I really miss living in a large family, where we all care for each other, uh, and provide what we all need for each other, so that we don't need to be ruled by anybody else uh, that can, can become uh, an imposition or harm upon us. Um, the way I look at things today is that if we don't have peace all around us, then we don't have peace. If we don't have freedom around us, we're not going to have freedom. If all around us is chaos, then we're living in the midst of chaos. And I guess well, Fiona will talk from, from, from her point of view as a mother and, uh, and with children. Uh, for myself, uh, I would like to be a gift. I want to live where every day I wake up and I do things for the community that I'm part of. And if everyone else was doing that, then we don't need the system anymore. Because I don't need to have to go to the government to get access to a community to where there are people. I can just go straight to the people and have the people. Which means that to not have the government, we need to be able to take responsibility for our own lives. Because the reason why we have government, and the reason why we have the rule of law, and why we have um, the political systems in the, in the many forms that forms government, and, and the rule of law, is that we are not taking responsibility for our lives. That we are actually passing our responsibility on to third parties, to actually to people who are generally strangers, who don't really know the intimacies of our characters, the interests of our private dreams, and the way we want to live. And, and as we're all noticing, this has been crushed out of just about everybody today. In the Love for Life work that we do, we receive vast amounts of emails, letters, and, uh, and phone calls, and what the common theme is that, uh, that men and women everywhere are so disenfranchised with the world they're living in. They're scratching their heads from the work of what is going wrong. Why, uh, what, what is it um, that has caused them to feel a sense of total uncertainty? They don't feel happy. Um, they feel uh, insecure. And one of the things that I hear a lot, and I hear it even from Fiona, that they don't feel safe anymore. And the idea of Kingdom is to create community immunity where many of us um, want to be there for each other and give the very best for each other uh, through the gifts that we create, which is the, 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 our gifts of labour. Not as in slave labour, but in the, uh, our gifts that create the, the fruits of our labour that our community can benefit from. And if many of us are all doing that for each other, it starts to become the replacement to Medicare. It becomes the replacement to the hospital system as we know it. It replaces government. It replaces the rule of law because our energy, our love for each other provides that. The key for it to work is that everyone takes full responsibility for that dream. As it is now, the system that we're living under is about limited liability where people do not take full responsibility because they're passing on the responsibility to others who tell them how to think and feel what is right and wrong and issue the rules, regulations, rituals, procedures, conditions and contracts. And as we can see, that ain't working. So what I'm saying is that we don't need government you know, to get access to the people. We'd, uh, we can actually go directly to the people, which is our community, and provide the government that we need amongst each other uh, because we all know each other, we all know what we need from each other, and collectively we can help each other. The way that that will work is through do no harm. As long as we all agree that we live, that the only rule we have 
and it's not really real because it comes out of love, is that we live to do no harm through feelings, thoughts, words and actions. As long as we're prepared to do that and we help each other through that, then we won't be pounding each other through arguing over belief systems and religions and it doesn't matter what the philosophies are because this, over, this supersedes all of it. Because do no harm is the most powerful way to get us working together as a tribe or a community or a village uh, that forms community immunity. In community, with community immunity, harm done to one is harm done to all of us. If someone outside in the system wants to pick on one of us, they take it on all of us. If, if, if any harm happens to someone through sickness, the whole community gets involved to help in whatever way possible. Even if it means providing them space. But whatever it is, we all become each other's body. We become each other's parents. We become the, we become the guardians of each other's children. We, the, 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 the others, our friends' grandparents are our grandparents. My children are their children. So basically, it's a collective, but it's done through do no harm and it's done through love. This is not done through religion. It's not done through a cult or a sect. There's no one to follow. There's, this is not about passing the buck to someone else who's going to tell you how to think and feel. Because we each take responsibility for our actions. And we come to community each day in what we can create as a gift for that community. And this is what community is about. And it's a team effort. That, that life is a team effort. And it's not about anyone owning the land anymore. We are on the land and we nurture the land and we take care of the land. We grow our food on the land. But it is not our land to own because the land is life just as we are life and no one can own us and we can't own the land. So we, we all work together to nurture the land that we are living on and uh, teach our children to nurture the land when we are gone. And in that way we can start to heal earth and start to plant the trees where they need planting to um, reforest the deserts where they need reforesting to um, re-correct the balance where, of rain and, and all the problems that we're having and um, we feel that everyone should have a right to feel safe on a piece of land that they have to care for that no one is going to throw them off no one's going to say they have to pay money for it and it's going to be theirs for their family for the future generations for them to look after and nurture and do no harm to and that land in return will provide them with what they need to eat and just their joy and abundance of life. The excess of that um, abundance is shared back in the community. The community's excess goes back to share with other communities. When we're all doing that for each other we do not need the system that we live under anymore. Yes it's going to be a real challenge to pull out of the system but that is what we must do now because the system represents immense harm to all of us. Um, the moment we have forsaken who we are as a man, meaning that we are no longer uh, taking full responsibility for who we are, then we are allowing others to rule us as their masters. We are not meant to be ruled by anybody. We are meant to be taking full responsibility for who we are. Because if we can't do that, then we can't be counted on. But not only that, everyone else around us won't count on us anymore because we'll, represent, we'll be a threat to them because we could harm them, harm their children. Which is how it is today with the police system that we live under. They're all under limited liability. Even the political system and all the people behind the law, they all operate under limited liability. It means they will not take responsibility for any harm they do to you. Meaning, they will do harm to you anytime they feel it because they're not accountable. So to stop it, we're going to take full responsibility. And we're going to live for each other in such a way that we're saying goodbye to the system. Because that is the way out of this nightmare. Because the system is a nightmare. This is not an escape. This is not a copying out or running away from the system. This is a remedy to heal the chaos of the system. To show other people that we don't have to barricade ourselves behind locks and, and steel behind windows and, and alarm systems and close monitoring and that we can't trust each other anymore. Because then we need third parties, we need other people to control us and manage because no one's taking responsibility. And the responsibility starts with our lives and our bodies, which means we have to take responsibility about what we're putting into our bodies. And we have to take responsibility for creating a healthy body that we live in so that will not get sick because we treat it correctly, we clean it, we feed it real food that actually gives it nourishment and we drink clean water. 
and that enables us to clean out our brains which means we start thinking more which is how we keep working on okay how do we live without harm how do we live without harm obviously at the beginning there will be elements of harm because we haven't worked out how to win out of the harm yet but the more we keep working on it and the more we keep focusing on it and the more we think about it and the more we keep cleaning our bodies and contemplating on nature the more we are able to see how to just gently gently wean out of all the harm until there is no harm anymore we, we wrote, um, it was actually an email, a discussion with some friends back in 2007 that kicked it off, but we called it the 10 Steps of Kingdom. And we looked at the logistics of, uh, of how practically we can actually make clever steps over a period of time where we are weaning ourselves, like when you, a drug addict to heroin has to be weaned off the heroin and going through cold turkey. We have to be able to go through the cold turkey of weaning ourselves off the addictions of the system so that we have learnt how to take full responsibility because the system represents us giving up our responsibility, giving up our energy for the system instead of giving up, instead of giving all our life for the community of the people that we're around who know best because the community that is our family will know the best about me and my character I will know the best about each other's character we can help and grow and learn from each other that way you know, there are, we, all, we are all compromised. We all have issues. This is not something that's a, a, a one-shoe-fit-all policy that is a mold. We're all going to just fix all these problems with a magic wand. But the guidelines are simple, that if we follow a do-no-harm way of life, then we will get through this. If we give up the do-no-harm way of life attitude, then we will find reasons to, uh, to, that will be justified to sabotage dreams like a kingdom. So this is only going to work for those at this early stage who want to live uh, a way of love and do no harm. Yes, we're pioneers. Yes, we're all pioneers. But we don't care about that. We just don't want to live in a system. I want to grow, have my children grow up knowing that there's no some, there's no some pedophile lurking nearby, or there are police waiting uh, two kilometres away waiting for us to hop in the in, in the horseless chariot and pull us over because they've got some statutes they want to force on us and harm us. Because that's the issue of the system that I have, is that everything about their laws is about harm. They will not take any responsibility for the actions. Even if we don't break, if the thing is like we don't break the peace, no one is injured, there's been no harm caused, there's been no crime committed, and yet we're still being attacked and terrorised by the statutes and the laws of the system who think that they have this right to impose their will over us. What they're really saying is they do not want us to remember who we are. We're mad. We are capable of taking full responsibility of who we are. We don't need to have to have nannies taking care of us. We don't need to be wards of the state anymore. Where we're under these people who tell us how we should live our lives. We're basically saying to them, goodbye. We don't need you anymore. So kingdom is a, a way of pulling out of the system, using the ten steps of the kingdom. It is not a fixed template. It is just an idea. So we, we have posted that up on the website. But maybe we'll do another recording, we might even explain about the 10 steps and we can put that up as well. But the thing, the thing is that um, I guess what really got me motivated to make this video is that one, one afternoon a Fiona said to me, said to me quietly, said, she said, well, I don't feel safe. And somehow I must have been in that space, it just hit me so hard. And I realised that I'm, I am not actually honouring my responsibility as a, as a, as a partner in the, in the relationship I have with Fiona and the children, to care for my children. So that is what this is a calling out. I'm asking for you, do you want to live in a world of no harm? Would you like to live in paradise? Because we've worked out how to do it. There is a way. If you'd like to do it, come and join with us, but not follow us. We don't want to follow you. There are no leaders in this. All great leaders have no followers, because we each know that each of us takes full responsibility for our actions and to share the workload around of what we do. And that we know that life is a team effort. So it needs us as a team to do it. So if anyone is inspired to join us in this dream, the next thing we need to do now is to get onto some land. We know the steps to take to start us on the way of Kingdom but we need to be on the land and doing it because then we are offering a living demonstration of another way of life that we can live without the system, without the banks, without the government, without the hospitals. We can do that. And, and without money. Life, and without money. And it will be 
a life of great joy and abundance and with nothing to fear. But now we're asking anyone who wants this dream and has some fictional dollars or land or anything that they or are skills. happy to or skills they are happy to just give as a gift, please do so. Because yeah. we, we do not have the if we had the financial fiction to go buy a piece of land and start right now, we'd be doing it. We do not have that and nor do the other people we know who close closely who want to follow this dream too. So this piece of land which is perfect for Kingdom has come up for sale. It will probably go very cheaply, unfortunately for the owners. It's a mortgagee sale. If anyone is inspired to put some gifts in the direction of purchasing that property, we'd be very happy. Our ancestors were all tribes before the system came along and intervened as intermeddling third parties and this is what we need to go back to. Tribes of people where we care for each other. And this isn't about going back to the dark ages. A lot of what we've ta been taught is, is wrong about how people lived. As someone we met recently whose father grew up in Chile said, you know, we had to go riding on horseback to go fishing to catch our, our fish for supper. I mean, how hard is that compared to what we have to do now to put food on the table? Not that I want to eat fish, but, you know, it's just living a life of simplicity in nature does not have to be a life of hardship and drudgery. You know, life is a gift, and once we start living like that, we move away from the me, 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 I, 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 I want this, I need this, my desires, my wishes, my hopes, my dreams, everything, and it becomes, my life becomes, what can I do for life? How can I serve life? And in that, we find great joy. I mean, as we look around us in the world, that's getting more and more selfish and greedy, yet more and more unhappy and sad. So. The answer is not to live as we're living now. The answer is to be living differently. And it's also about the values, the way we're living now, the values are all about how much money someone has or how beautiful they are or what, how many houses we have. But we all have different things to offer and there's no way we can value one against another. One man or woman may come to Kingdom and have dollars to offer to create infrastructure or buy land. But is that man or woman any better than perhaps a, an older lady who's missing a leg and has no dollars to offer, but she's fantastic with the children at storytelling and has a great wealth of knowledge of, about planting and how plants grow and, and how they all co-create together. We cannot place a value on either of them. That's why this kingdom's not about you can come if you've got this many dollars to buy a share because we do not want it to be something that people are excluded because of things of the system that they don't have. It works when we see life as a gift. And when we, when we come to life as a gift, it sort of wipes the, the slate clean of all the issues that sabotage all the relationships that people have and all the attempts in the past for creating communities. The, the, and this is uh, uh, why we've created what we call the mudroom. Because the mudroom as part of the 10 Steps of Kidney is where we all sort our issues out and as, and as we work through the mudroom we, 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 we start to build each other's homes, help each other's gardens and, and, and continue to develop the tribal environment where we support each other because we become our own uh, economy. Um, we all become each other's, um, basically everything that we have in the community in the system we do it for each other. Um, the, key, the key to a kingdom is a raw food, living food way of life. It means we have to stop cooking food. Now it's not a law or a rule, it's simply that life is information. Everything that is in nature has information and it's all pure and sincere. Before we distort that information, which we do when we cook it and heat it and process it and manipulate it and we poison it and we add things to it, which is what we've now done to the water that we're now drinking and the air that we're breathing and the, and the foods that we're buying that could take many, many weeks to come from great distances, uh, be chemicalised to and, and be frozen or, or kept in cold environments to get it into the uh, food shops before we actually get the food and put it on your table. And that food is literally not beneficial to us. So the, the whole idea of Kingdom is to stop the distortion. Now to stop the distortion means we have to stop altering the information that is nature, that is life. Because when we alter the information, we eat it. We think that distortion, we feel that distortion. Uh, when we act on that information, we, everything that comes out of it will be distorted. 
And that is the world we're living in today. Because we're altering who we are and altering everything that we are part of. So it's a consequence. I wouldn't call this a law or a rule. It's a consequence of harm doing. So kingdom is about becoming conscious of the harm that we're creating. And that means we've got to take full responsibility to stop the harm. In stopping the harm, we will start to minimize the distortion. And as we go through the mudroom and through the 10 steps, we will become completely healed of all the distortion. Or at least we've created the platform uh, which we pass on to our children. And they will inherit the benefits of that, but then pass it on. And our children will get back to nature where they won't know what it is to have sickness or disease anymore. And I stress the point, all sickness and disease is man-made. There's nothing natural about any disease or any sickness or whatever known to man. It's all man-made. It's all because of distortion to life. And that includes vaccinations and all the immunizations that come with vaccinations. It includes all the, the issues with our bodies, including even my body and the state of my body the way it is now. No matter where we go, where we see harm, it's because man has done it. Nature does not cause the harm. It's us. So kingdom is about becoming conscious of the distortion and learning to stop it. And in doing that, to start to spread that out to the wider communities and to demonstrate a way of life that they can do that as well. And there's nothing, there's nothing, uh, it's not a mould where one shoe fits all type of policy has to occur. We're all unique. And there's a thousand one ways we can interpret the expression of do no harm. So I guess kingdom is, um, is, it has a lot of dynamics to it. And really, as Fiona touched on before, we were all tribes. Our ancestors were all tribes. We all came from nature. It was only until these tribes, our, our ancestors' tribes were invaded by the powers of be that who are the children of these, of these uh, ancestors who have brought the system with them and the lies that, are, that is the system of all the harm, which we've written a lot about. And the, the links to all those articles are in the Love for Life website, which we'll provide at the end of this video as well. So we ask for you, if you would like to come to Kingdom, it's because you want to live in a world of do no harm. You, we ask you to come to Kingdom not because of us. We, 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 you come to Kingdom because you're inspired to be with other people who want to take responsibility do no harm, which means no harm to you or your children, no harm to what goes into your mouth, no harm to what you breathe, no harm to the water you drink, no harm to the environment where you walk, no harm to the wider areas you go, because there's not going to be anyone around who wants to harm you, or have your children be raped, or you as a mother be raped, or have, uh, have some uh, police officers running around trying to harass you because of, they think that they have some standing over you. This is about creating community media and spreading it out and spreading it out because we've got to return that love back into the wider communities as a gift. And that's what this is about. It's a gift, a gift of life. If we can't take on that responsibility, the consequences for all of us are going to be massive. We will experience earth fevers beyond most people's comprehension and we have created that earth fever. Just as we have just ignored the well-being of our bodies by introducing distortion to our body, and that's processed foods, cooked foods, you name it, and all the, all the poison we've introduced to our body. Our body, if we wanted to keep it going, it has a fever. So we have diarrhea, we vomit, we sweat, we shake, and we go through this to try to expunge some of the distortion out of the body because the body has a natural pull back to harmony. It wants to be whole and be happy and be, and be centered. And the same as the earth, because the earth is our body. We're not separate from the earth. The earth will have a fever too. And the kingdom represents a healing of the earth fever. If we don't get these kingdoms off the ground, we will experience these earth fevers. This is not fear that I'm speaking to. It's a consequence of us not taking on the responsibility for the distortion that we are creating, which will come bouncing back in the image of our making. And we're living in those times now. So I'm not, not into all the, 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 the weird uh, uh, theories about that something else out there is responsible for the earth fever, that other forces greater than us are manipulating us. It's all a lie. We are creating it by our thinking. And it's our thinking that has to change. And that will, in our, with our thinking changing, it impacts our attitudes and the way we live with each other. And that is what I live for. And I ask you, if you'd like to have me in your life, I welcome you into my life. I want, I want to be part of a family, as Fiona wants to do. She wants to be part of a family. 